This is a short video just to explain how to ensure your replacement gear end plate matches your casing. The factory manufactured end plates to suit casings, if you've had to replace it, there's a very good chance it will not align correctly. This is the way we would check that. Um, first, fit your gear end plate with the new 6004 bearing, put the lay sharp topped hat into that, and do the checks to ensure that your lay shaft is actually flat and in good condition. So check the, your, uh, your straight edge that both sides are the same height and this surface is good. Then check that your lay shaft will actually fit into the bearing and it's a nice snug fit, it's correct, it's, it's not too tight, it's not too loose. And do the same test with your cluster. Now clusters will usually be tighter than this. We had the five speed ones purposefully manufactured because we were doing these uh, matches more frequently. So potentially put one on a lathe, and take it down with the emery paper slightly until you've got a very nice snug fit but doesn't require force in it significantly to push it in and out. Once you've done that, you're very likely to find that if you then drop the end plate into position, she won't line up without the bearing on the lay shaft, she won't line up perfectly with the lay shaft. So what you'll end up doing is finding you've got some space there and things aren't sitting perfectly. We need to be able to pass through central. So on this one, I've drilled out each of the six positions from their seven and a half mil to eight mil. Sometimes they'll need to go up to eight and a half mil in order to get enough flow. Sometimes you'll even need to file the front of this surface here if it happens to be touching on the inside of the casing. Always make sure you clean that chamfer up again if you have had to do this because the edges of them can catch and mean that you get a lift where you shouldn't. Um, once you've got all of that established, you can then put your bearing onto your lay shaft and find out if you can actually drop the thing on and off smoothly. If you can't do this smoothly, if it won't actually drop on and off just by hands and you're finding you're having to use force, it's probably catching on one of the stud positions. So find that position and look for which stud position is it too close to. You can then choose to dress a little bit of material out of that stud hole or you could potentially drill that stud hole slightly larger. Now we can uh, uh, do a sales pitch on our rear hub bearing here. The double roller rear hub bearings are remarkably rigid because they've got two sets of rollers in them. So it means that lay shaft's got negligible play on it, which allows us to be really accurate in our location. Standard rear hub bearings, it's far easier not to get this correct. And it, you can't do it with the standard rear hub bearing on the side as the lay shaft's own weight will pull it out of position. If they are out of position, you'll just wear out bearings in a much faster time than you should. But yeah, once you've established you've got the lay shaft alignment, you can then drop the cluster into there and we're after being able to drop this all into place that sits down nicely now and it should be able to lift the cluster up and down so that I know that I'm central if this was out of position so if I force it I now can't pull that out of position uh, up and down it needs to be in a neutral position so that's as good as I can get for knowing that the lay shaft is aligned and the clusters aligned I'd now tighten nuts and washers down on all six positions and then make sure I can still do that once I've then got that locked down that way, now I can make the dowels do the job they're supposed to. So if I'm in this position, if you look into this dowel hole, you'll see that there's a nice overlap of material where the dowel does not line up with the hole. Had I fitted the dowels, this end plate would have been forced out of location. So what we'll do now is drill those two positions to slightly larger. I'm going to go to an 8mm and fit an 8mm dowel in either position, then re-peen over the edge so that the dowels can never come out. Because you're going to go and take the end plate on and off several times and then again several times when you start shimming, I find it quite convenient to put small cuts on the edge of it, which mean that you can then, when uni have also helpfully put a bit of casting in here to be strong, but so you can lever the thing whilst you're pulling. So you can make it easier to take the end plate in and out if it's being troublesome. So yeah, you've got a, a pry bar. Uh, obviously not loads of force, but yeah, enough to be able to get some grip. Um, other notes on there, I think that's, yeah, that one would now be matched once drilled. 